folks, welcome to the Wolf Den one more time. Well, I'm kind of doing this uh, video. It's kind of an impromptu. It's nothing I'm seriously sitting down here planning, okay? But I want to talk about a reel that I've been using. And um, there's not a ton of information about it. There is a video on YouTube where a real repair guy, looks like a real repair guy, is breaking down the reel and it's like brand new. It is brand new or something. He's just going over it or doing something for the guy who brought him the reel. But what I want to talk about is these reels that don't really have a whole lot of info on them as far as YouTube. I mean, this isn't like, you know, talking about the newest Shimano Corrado or anything, okay? But these are... The thin or uh, conventional, you know, medium to large game type reels is what I want to talk about. And it's called the thin or sport fisher. Okay. They, I've got smaller ones and then I've got these. Um, I, use, I use these with mono, not braid. These are actually my medium... I guess, you know, or so shark fishing reels. This is 60 pound uh, high vis strand or something like that. Um, holds an absolute buttload of line, and that's what I wanted. And it's the four aught size. Okay, and I've been using these now for, I think, two years. And I mean, I use them all summer. Abuse them all summer. They get soaked and wet. And um, I kind of like ride them hard and put them up wet. I have not done any special maintenance to these. These are not something that I treat like a Daiwa Ryoga. Okay. These reels can be purchased anywhere from $89 a piece to like $115 a piece. Depending on who you're getting them from. Like I said, this is a four-aught size. I've got ones that are like a three-aught size. But what we're going to do here in this video is show you what these reels look like after two years of beating the crap out of them, getting them soaked with salt water, and at the end of the day, giving them a little spritz off. Um, well, I don't know where I did with it. Putting on a reel cover and then throwing them in the tackle vault. Okay, and at the end of the summer, I'm moving right on the, you know, uh, more inshore light tackle, you know, um, smaller red fish, um, doing my speckled trout, float rig fishing and stuff, and I forget all about these reels. Out of sight, out of mind, I put the covers on, boom, they're over there. They're, I match them up with these anti-foul guide Guided Ugly Stick Customs. These uh, rods that I match them up with are, uh, let's see, yeah, Ugly Stick Custom. They're a medium heavy, medium heavy action, 30 to 50 pound line. And for all you guys who want to get real particular, these are a USCB 1170MH. And these have the slick butt, a metal gimbal, big foregrip, and for your black tips, um, and just, you know, running and gunning behind the shrimp boats and stuff, you'll see these being worked all summer. They got these anti-foul guides. You can just beat these rods up. These are really... Um, Really a, a, a quality rod that doesn't cost a ton of money, of course. They're tubular. They're ugly stick. And they have a great bend to them. And they're a little forgiving, but at the same time, you know, you can handle several, several hundred pound shark or something on these. Okay? So that's what I have these matched up with. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start and stop the camera here. And as I break this reel down, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not dumping the gears out of them or anything like that. Okay. 
but I'm going to show you the good parts about this reel and what I consider the flaws of this reel. And believe it or not, it's got some pretty serious flaw, but then again, it's got some really good things about it. So uh, let me get this sort of broke down a little bit and we'll get right back to you and um, show you about the Finor Sport Fisherman 4 rot series. Um, they call this, they actually call it something. It's got a 3.4 to 1 gear ratio. And I can't remember the name. Oh, here it is. This is called an ST50. I've got ST30s also. They don't get used as hard. I mean, when I'm going, going for it, I just grab all these and put them on the boat. Okay, the ST50 Finor Sport Fisher. That's the reel, and now I'm going to break it on down and kind of show you. All right? All righty, folks. Well, here I got one of the sides off the reel. And here it is. It's a nice aluminum spool. Okay. Um, heavy shaft. Here's the bearing right here. There's a bearing right here. And here's the side plate. Now the side plates come in several kind of pieces. You've got the outside side plate, you got a stainless ring, and then you've got this like membrane here. Okay, to probably try to keep water out. Okay. Now the other bearing for the other side of the spool is located inside that little holder right there. Okay, I'm going to clean that out because it's all greasy and pretty much just oil it. All right, here's the flaw, and I don't know if you can see it. Here's what these reels look like. They're all salty, nasty, okay, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. I'm hoping is this frame is aluminum, and I would assume it's, it's kind of anodized. Well, right here, it's all pit, not pitted. But the anodizing is all bubbling, okay? It's all bubbling up. And um, you can see on the inside here, it's just covered in salt, okay? And if I take, let me get one out here. If I take like a toothbrush, which I keep my old toothbrushes, well, here's one. There's an old Top Care from Walmart or whatever. And if I go in here, watch this. Now I want you to really be able to see this. This is put up wet. Okay, I mean, these reels get worked. There's the anodizing or whatever it is, painted. I don't know. It might be painted. It might be anodized. Look at that. There you go. There's the major flaw. I think that's just paint. It's all coming off. Everywhere the salt sits, you go like that, and the anodizing, or I, I suspect just paint, that's all bubbled up from the salt, starts peeling off. Now it's not peeling off there yet because it's not broken up. Okay, but what I'll do is I'll go like this and there you go. You can see the paint is just chipping right off. Now what you could do naturally with this is you could break this reel down, I'm sure, and you could repaint it or something like that. Now look at all this black dust here, okay? So that's, that's the major flaw. And that's pretty much the only flaw that I have found is that this coating or whatever it is, as <coughs> soon as the salt sits on it, it gets 
all flaky. Now you're going to say to yourself, what is Dave going to do now that he's knocking all this off? Well, all I'm going to do, because these are just workhorse reels, and none of this keeps them from working. But on an old Daiwa Sea line, they had aluminum frames, and that's what I loved about them. And that's the reason why I got these reels, for the sheer fact they reminded me of the old Daiwa Sea line, okay, that were hard to get. And if you're going to buy them, you got to pay a premium. And then after that, because I had a whole bunch of Daiwa Sea lines. And um, you're going to pay a premium for them if you get them where they're like brand new, still in a box, and they were been hidden away in some, some you know, uh, some warehouse. Um, but there you go. Look at the salt just eating away. The Daiwas never, ever did this. Not that I can really remember any of my Daiwas doing it. That was truly an anodized finish, I think, on the Daiwas. And these aren't nothing but painted. But what I'm going to do with this is I am just going to take some WD-40 or something like that. And I am just going to just coat this all in here and just move on. All right. But the one thing that I do like about these reels, that's sort of like a Daiwa. And of course, the one, let me, well, let me back up. Here's one of the things that I really like about these reels, and I hate about pens. I hate about a pen senator or something like that. See that? It's like a Torx. No, no flat screws. I got this little Torx end. I guess it's a Torx. And um, I just hate flat screws in heavy duty reels like this. So all the screws, if you can see that, are a star type Torx. All right. Another thing they do on the reel clamps. Of course, on a big game sort of 100-pounder fish reel, um, these are a, this, this clamp goes, of course, onto these two studs here. And it's sort of a, it's sort of a pain in the butt, too, because you have to have the Daiwa tool, and it goes into these slots like this to take it off. Okay, you got to use that forked part goes into two grooves there to take it off. But then the nice thing about it is they put O-rings in here to hold these on. So you're not losing this nut if you have to take it off on the boat or switch the reel to another rod or anything like that. So that's also nice, but you, you got to have this tool or it's a pain in the butt to get these off. So I'm not breaking it down really much further than here, but another thing I like is it reminds me of Daiwa again, is that spool bearing goes into that cup. Now they could have had it where it was more exposed, but like a Daiwa, uh, many Daiwa reels the, the bearing goes into this nice cup right here, and I feel that that sort of protects it, okay? It, do, it sort of protects it, um, gives it a place to seat in there. And I can tell you, no matter how rusty, crusty, whatever you want to call it, that these reels get. I mean, that handle's stiff. Um, I've got it. I don't have it on the most leverage. you got another point there. These drags are super smooth, and the actual gears on the reel are extremely smooth after just working these reels, and then, like I said, just working them hard and putting them up wet. So, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to grease or oil it and oil the bearings and oil the handle 
And then I'm just basically going to give the whole interior of this just a sort of a WD-40 bath. Okay. And I'm going to knock off all this loose paint. And they clean up pretty easy. Except now what do you got? You got a, you got a real frame that's missing a whole lot of paint. And then it could start to get maybe pitted in here. I don't know the quality of this aluminum. I'm sure it's not like the quality of aluminum my boat's built out of or anything. It's just cast. All right. It's not machined. But then again, you're not talking about a super expensive reel. You're talking about an entry-level reel. Or like me, when I buy reels, I've got to get them in fours and six packs. So I can't get, you know, I can't be running um, all these expensive reels um, when I need to go out and get four of them in one shot. Like I said, I got these off of eBay. I paid as less as like 90 bucks for them. And they do the job. They do the job. They get the fish to the boat. They got a smooth drag. The handle, the way they turn, the reel turns. Works really good. I love the torques here. It's just a four-aught reel is all this is. But there's some of the high and low points to the ST50. I'm sure it's the same way. Everything's identical with the ST30s. Okay. The fin oars are fin... Um, you know, I mean, these ain't built down there in uh, South Florida at the fin oar you know, headquarters or anything, I'm sure. But it's all bubbling up in there. I'm not really going to take sandpaper to it. Okay. I'm just going to rub it. Rub it. Just get that loose paint off. What the hell? You know? Might be the worst thing to do, but then at the same time, I just want to press these babies into action. I cleaned two last week, and now I'm going to clean these two up and I'm just going to try to get all this salt off. Actually, probably a good thing to do would be actually give this a bath and salt away. I don't have any, but that might be a, might be a good idea. Or, you know, spray these off with salt away. But people have to remember salt away is a light acid. Kind of almost the way vinegar is a light, light acid. And um, many times on some of these reels, people will clean the reels with Salt X or any product like it. And what does Salt X do eventually? Eventually, it starts to eat away, if you don't get it off of there, on little O rings and things like that. Because I had a friend of mine who has a Z Boss reel, spinning reel, and he's got a whole bunch of Van Stalls. And they were spraying them off with salt away and then rinsing them. Well, it didn't come all off. And I think he said that the O-ring that makes the Van Stahl and the Z-Boz uh, spinning reels. So uh, salt waterproof and submersible for, for um, the guys that are actually standing in the salt and the surf. They're standing in the water and, and surf casting. What makes those so good is because of the case on them and everything has little fine O-rings to keep the water out. And down inside the uh, spool where the gear shaft goes up and down on a spinner, it's got stuff like that. So over time, I think he told me that Salt X will sort of eat away at some of those O-rings and things like that. So you still have to be careful even though you think... You may be doing very well. You might be doing good with it. Um, all I really have for my purposes right here, right now, just to do a quick and dirty on these reels, is just some WD-40 and stuff. And I'm going to use it like a, a solvent and just try to clean up this aluminum. And then I'm going to slap this back together and put them on those rods and be probably pressing them in the service. So... That's the Fenor ST50, a little breakdown, a little good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, I like the reels. They work for me. 
They're not expensive, and there's not a lot of information on YouTube about them. So I hope this helps out if you're choosing one of these or looking at them in a store or on eBay or online or anywhere. Take better care of them than I took care of mine. I guess that's probably the moral of the story. So, I'll be adding this video to my Rods and Reels playlist on my channel. And putting it out there and hopefully, like I said, hopefully people take care, better care of their Finor ST30s and 50 sport fishermen's, or what do they call them, sport fishers, than I have. Thanks for watching.